Hi everyone, a few years ago I started a series of miniature paintings called the Snowmen of the Old Masters, where I reproduced some famous paintings, but turned the person in it into a snowman. I can't even remember why I started doing that, I just thought it was fun. And I've been painting some from time to time, sometimes more than others. I shared a few with you maybe last year or the year before, I can't remember. And I realized that this winter I hadn't painted any yet, so here it is. So as you all know, I'm never keen on sketching straight onto my final surface, and this time was no different. So I took my tiny little canvas, it's a two and a half by three and a half inches, and I traced it on a little sketchbook. So I had the, um, the right size right away without having to use a ruler or anything. And it's a sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect. And this time I used the Milkmaid by Vermeer. So I sketched all the elements and I turned the head and the arms and hands into snow. And I was pretty happy with the sketch. Later on I added more of the shading, but um, I just wanted to be quick and have a basic line drawing. And I used a piece of tracing paper to transfer my sketch onto my canvas. This little canvas is already primed, so it worked just fine. I didn't have to prepare it. And I wanted to practice using my acrylic gouache again on the, on the canvas, so that's what I used, and I used my new Holbein gouache. So that's the second time I'm using those. The first time was with the panda. And boy, do I have a great piece of advice for you. If you're practicing using a new medium that you're not familiar with, you probably shouldn't use a tiny little format, like a two and a half by three and a half inches with a lot of details. This was tough and probably not the best way for me to get familiar with the medium. So it took me forever to paint this painting. It took me five and a half hours. Yes, it's really small and shouldn't have taken me that long. I don't think my previous paintings from this series that size ever took me that long. It took me three to four sessions to finish it and I tried different things. First, I put my paint on a ceramic palette because I thought it was gonna take me a reasonable amount of time to finish it. So I decided to try it and the paint doesn't dry very fast. So I thought it would work. Unfortunately, it kind of worked like acrylic paint and it started drying on the palette pretty fast or at least faster than I wanted it to. So even before I was done with blocking all the elements, I decided to transfer the paint that was still wet into a stay wet palette. So I got the sponge all wet and I covered it with a piece of palette paper and I scraped all the paint from my ceramic palette and put it on top of the paper. Once I was done blocking everything, I took a break. And for my second session, I could already see how some of the paint had liquefied a bit. It's, it's just funny, this paint in a stay wet palette really stays wet and ends up being even more wet than right out of the tube. So you really barely need any water. I had a hard time, I don't know why. I think maybe the colors are so saturated that I had a hard time rendering them and also maybe because I couldn't find or I had a hard time finding the right colors that I needed. So after the second session, I took a longer break, several days, and when I reopened my palette, I noticed that everything was liquefied. There were just puddles of, of paint. So I tried to use them, but I gave up right away. I threw it away, and then I put some fresh paint on my palette. Thank you. 
And then session number four, I was done procrastinating. I was determined to finish it. Even though I had struggled, I just wanted to just plow through it and, and finish it. And I finally really got into it and started enjoying it. I think that's how it is sometimes when you're struggling with a painting, you just need a little boost and, and just push yourself and eventually you, you finish it and you're pretty happy. So that's what happened. I'm pretty happy with the result. In the end, I'm happy that I stayed with it, that I didn't give up and that I finally finished it. Now I have to say that once it was dry, the finish is very velvety, like almost to the point where there's a texture, there's a velvety texture to it. I don't know how to describe it. It's very odd. I've never seen that before. And it kind of bugged me in a way, especially on the canvas. Uh, it looked weird. It's, I'm not saying it looked bad. It just looked very bright and saturated, which is pretty awesome for those paints. It means that really, really are loaded with pigments. But in the end, I was kind of afraid of using my wax on it. I knew that it was all dry, that the paint should move, but I didn't feel it. So I used a, um, a spray on it instead. And it's a um, satin spray, so it kind of toned down the, um, the velvety finish. But it didn't turn it into a glossy painting either. And I'm happy with what it looks like now. And to the touch, it feels nicer. Because when it was just the paint itself without the varnish, it just felt, I don't know, it, it felt weird. <laughs> I really don't know how to describe. I don't know if any of you have used the Holbein acrylic gouache on canvas before. Uh, I actually have not used it on paper yet, <laughs> uh, only for swatches. So I have to, to paint something on paper now and a larger format too, just to, to get more familiar with it. Uh, maybe I'll paint a landscape or something. I don't know. But other than that, I really like this paint. It's, re it's really creamy. It blends very well. And um, I just need to get used to it. <laughs> all right. I'm done with my rambling for today. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you all for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye bye.